Ever puzzled over how a guided wave radar level transmitter operates? Let's unravel this mystery together. The guided wave radar level transmitter, also known as time domain reflectometry or microimpulse radar, is a marvel of modern engineering. It's typically mounted on the top of a tank or chamber, with a probe extending to the full depth of the vessel. This ingenious device sends a low energy pulse of microwaves traveling at the speed of light down this probe. When this pulse reaches the liquid level, a significant portion of its energy is reflected back up the probe to the transmitter. This is where the magic happens. The transmitter measures the time delay between the transmitted and received echo signal. But what does this time delay mean for us? Well, it holds the key to calculating the distance to the liquid surface. Now you might be wondering how does the transmitter calculate the distance to the liquid surface? Let's delve into that. So how does the guided wave radar level transmitter calculate the distance to the liquid surface? Let's dive into the working principle. The guided wave radar, or GWR for short, is positioned on top of a tank or chamber. From there, a low energy pulse of microwaves moving at the speed of light is sent down a probe that usually extends to the full depth of the vessel. When the pulse reaches the liquid level, a significant portion of the microwave energy is reflected back up the probe to the transmitter. Here's where the magic happens. The transmitter measures the time delay between the transmitted and received echo signal. Using the formula, distance equals speed of light times time delay, all divided by two. The onboard microprocessor calculates the distance to the liquid surface. But how do we get the liquid level? The transmitter is programmed with the reference gauge height of the application, typically the bottom of the tank or chamber. The microprocessor then calculates the liquid level using the equation. Level equals tank height minus distance. The interesting thing is some of the pulse continues down the probe through low dielectric fluids, allowing a second echo to be detected from an interface between two liquids. This characteristic makes GWR a perfect technique for measuring liquid-liquid interfaces like oil and water and measuring through some foams. This technique of measuring liquid-liquid interfaces makes the guided wave radar a versatile tool. But what are its benefits? Output. The guided wave radar level transmitter isn't just smart, it's also packed with benefits. One major advantage is that it has no moving parts, which means maintenance is minimal. It's a top-down, direct measurement device, so there's no need for compensation for changes in the density, dielectric or conductivity of the fluid. This technology stands up well to changes in pressure, temperature and most vapor space conditions without impacting the accuracy of its readings. It's versatile too. Whether you're dealing with liquids, sludges, slurries or some solids, the guided wave radar level transmitter can handle it all. It's suitable for a variety of applications. Small tanks, difficult tank geometries and interfering obstacles are no match for this device. It can even be easily upgraded and its top-down installation minimizes the risk for leakages. Despite these advantages, there are some limitations to consider. While the guided wave radar level transmitter is impressive, it's important to be aware of its limitations. Its effectiveness can be influenced by probe choice, application, length and mounting restrictions. For instance, probes should not come into direct contact with a metallic object as this can impact the signal. Sticky or coating applications are best handled by single lead probes. So, while the guided wave radar level transmitter is a powerful tool, it's essential to understand its capabilities and limitations to make the most of it.